Here we go from London. Members of Parliament rejecting Theresa May's plan. It fell by 58 votes. Just drop in for a moment here in London. On a point of order, Mr. Speaker, this is now the third time the Prime Minister's deal has been rejected. When he was defeated the first time, the Prime Minister said it's clear this House does not support the deal. Does she now finally accept that the House does not support the deal? Because she seemed to indicate just now that she's going to return to this issue again. On Monday, this House has the chance... And I say to all members, Mr Speaker, the responsibility to find a majority for a better deal for all the people of this country. Mr Speaker, the House has been clear. This deal now has to change. There has to be an alternative found. And if the Prime Minister can't accept that, then she must go, not at an indeterminate date in the future, but now, so that we can decide the future of this country through a general election. From the opposition leader, Jeremy Corby. So the vote goes down. It fails. Theresa May has been trying to get this deal passed in Parliament. Um, it, it looks like at the moment the Brexit mess will continue, and perhaps it gets even deeper by the day here. John Bussey from the Wall Street Journal is with me on this. A, a, a number of possible outcomes here. She could resign. You could have new elections. You could leave the EU in a couple weeks from now and take the deal that's on the table. Or perhaps you throw all that out the window yet again. Yes, that's right. It's a mess uh, politically in Britain right now. Uh, all of those possibilities are possible. Uh, it is causing business to make decisions uh, to essentially uh, not uh, engage with kind of expansions in Britain, expansions pop, you know, possibly in Europe if there are operations in Britain. There's a lot at stake here. It's not just the political fulminations within Parliament in Britain. It's a lot of economic growth uh, that's being uh, essentially held back. Uh, there's a lot of business uh, decisions that are also being held back. Uh, this is this is going to have a sort of a longish term impact on. Just rewind Britain's a little bit as to why the Brexit vote even happened. The, the folks in the in the UK they did not want to be legislated by a group of um, half a dozen um, members of the EU Commission out of Brussels. They wanted to make their own laws. Uh, we got Ben Hall right now. I don't know where we go from now, Ben. But what do you have from there? You know, that was high political drama today. Many people consider Theresa May's vote the last opportunity to pass Brexit in her way. Uh, and it really is open now. Basically, the UK now have 14 days to try and find a path forward. But the Parliament have rejected no deal. They have rejected a second referendum. They've rejected Theresa May's deal. And you can hear Theresa May speaking there, frankly, saying, I'm not sure if there is a majority for anything moving forward. And as it currently stands, the UK would fall out of the EU with no deal uh, in 14 days. And that, as we were just hearing, has huge catastrophic um, effect on both the U EU and the UK. I think because this loss was in, uh, down to just 58, and remember this was the third vote, the first she lost by 249, then by 100 odd, this one by 58, there may be a window to come back next week and try her deal one more time, uh, but she would have to do a deal of some sorts with the DUP. This is a Northern Irish party who have had the control all along. They have just 10 seats, but they have been concerned about being split off from the rest of the UK uh, and effectively being left to join uh, Ireland. And so they might be key here. And we have to see if she can bring her deal back just one more time next week. Other than that, every option remains on the table. It really is okay. chaos in British politics. Th thank you, Ben. Just looking at some of the notes here, too. They could have another election. Uh, if that's the case, maybe Boris Johnson steps in uh, and Theresa May is out. They, they, uh, some think they could have another referendum. They could redo the entire vote. How's that going to go over for those yeah. who thought Big Brother was telling them what to do? Well, I imagine it's very frustrating for voters because these politicians are also rejecting the will of voters who wanted Brexit. They wanted a way out. Now politicians can't figure out a way to deliver that. So I imagine there's a lot of frustration there as well. I mean, Theresa May had said that she would resign. Um, I mean, I, I wonder if those words were a way to put pressure on this because today it was believed that it would pass. Right. And so I think, though, we go back to last week, and I don't know if you saw, but there was a huge turnout of people who were saying, you know what, let's have another Brexit vote. Mm -hmm. I think it's unlikely. Uh, you know, it's Not even possible. a partial negotiation? Well, I just don't think the EU is going to somehow make concessions of the magnitude that many in the Parliament would like, because guess what? I think it's Britain that's on the spot right now. They're going to lose business. They're going to lose investment. Uh, people already are moving headquarters out of London 
back into other uh, European Union countries. Yeah, the politics of this really matter. Uh, you know, Britain has been a stabilizing voice in Europe for a long time. You're seeing right wing uh, sentiment. Uh, rising in places like Poland, in Hungary, right. uh, in Denmark, uh, in Italy. Uh, the same kind of rejection of immigration. Part of this was EU citizens being allowed to come into Britain. Uh, the British felt that some of the in Britain felt that they were taking jobs. That same sentiment is spreading across Europe. All We've right. seen that before but in but history, a lot of and this, it doesn't bode a well. A lot of John was an economic choice, though, too, that the voters were making. They did not want to be dictated as to what they had to do in terms of regulations that were dictated out of Brussels. Yeah, Brussels. that's true. That's very true. There's some um, of them, but remember, I think there are right. lots of Britons who didn't vote, who thought this isn't going to happen, and then all of a sudden the Boris Johnson-led right-wing kind of nationalist sentiment carried the day. Lots of people think... That's not true of the entire electorate. Do not underestimate the voter. Juan, thank right, you. Guys. Juan in a million, there he is. The lovely Lisa. John Bussey, thank you, sir. The handsome right. John Bussey. Come on.